Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for taking the time and joining with us at the YIES lecture meetings. Let me introduce myself. I am Ito. I'm with the Yomiuri Research Institute of the Yomiuri Shimbun. Today, we have the privilege of having Mr. Motegi Toshimitsu, Secretary General of LDP, who will discuss with us a review of the upper house election and the government's path forward. This month, uh, the, as a result of the upper house election, the ruling parties uh, enjoyed the landslide victory. And with the invasion uh, by Russia into Ukraine, when the international situation is drastically changing, Kishida administration is going to face the challenges, including the uh, the price surge and the need for increasing uh, the defense capability. And now that uh, uh, they have uh, the uh, sufficient number of seats on the upper house, the, this is going to be uh, also affecting uh, the dis discussion related to amendment of the Constitution. And uh, today we will hear from him about uh, the review of the upper house election and uh, the policies for the path forward. And we have a Q&A session as well. And uh, the, we expect to conclude the session around 1400. As for his profile, please refer to the handouts. Mr. Motegi has just arrived. We would like to now open the 377th lecture meeting of YIES, Yomiri International Economic Society. Today's theme is a review of the upper house election and the government's path forward. Now over to you, Mr. Motegi. Good afternoon. I am Motegi, Secretary General of LDP. Thank you for the invitation. I was informed that the YIES marks 50th anniversary since its establishment. It was 10 years ago in 2012 when it was on the eve of the uh, dissolution of the the lower house. We used to uh, belong to opposition party side, and uh, that was when Mr. Abe came here to speak in front of the audience, talking about uh, the, his basic ideas about the policies which would eventually form uh, the framework of Abenomics. And there he mentioned about uh, the mandatory uh, reform, mandatory policy, and uh, the, that resulted in the a major reaction from the stock market with a major surge of the stock price. And therefore, I would say that uh, it was here at YIES that uh, the, the, the Prime Minister Aves, uh, the, the, the policies were declared. And as YIES as an important uh, platform for presentation of important policies, I'd like to congratulate its 50th anniversary. So uh, now allow me to be seated. Once the upper house uh, election or the whatever the election would be, when the election is over, we feel we missed something. Two weeks ago, at the time of the upper house election, we won 63 seats. Uh, that alone represents majority, the simple majority of the seats in upper house. In other words, uh, we received the commitment from the public for stability of the politics, and uh, we keenly feel the responsibility that is on our shoulder. But uh, toward the end of uh, the election campaign, former Prime Minister Abe was assassinated. That he was shot uh, and died. That was such a tragedy that we experienced and shocked. And uh, it was in Nara, in front of uh, 
Yamato Saidaiji Station in, of Kintetsu Railway. I recall that it was exactly the same place that I gave、uh, the speech a week before. And on the eve of his death, I received a call from former Prime Minister Abe. He told me that、uh, his schedule. Was all of a sudden changed that he's going to visit Nara and he asked me about the situation、uh, about election in Nara. I was on the way back、uh, from Yamanashi. So they、uh, referred to the、uh, public opinion survey in Nara and、uh, I confirmed that、uh, the, the major trend、uh, was、uh, the, the same as before. And、uh, he seems to, be, to have been relieved, and、uh, we exchanged、uh, views and opinions about other districts as well. So when I received that news, I could not believe that、uh, the news was true. Election, that is the very basis of the democracy, and、uh, by violence、uh, during the election campaign. Politician was killed, but we should never yield to violence. And in fact, we see it as a challenge to democracy so that we cannot afford to yield to violence. And the over tears,、uh, we continue to fight until the end of the campaign and as a result of election. The, at the time of the、uh, former election, Uh, the, that was six years ago. We received uh, 56, uh, followed by 57 at the last election, but now it is 63 seats that we won.、Uh, the, especially,、uh, there are 32 districts with one seat, and、uh, the The two elections before,、uh, we won in 21 districts, but、uh, they lost 11, and then that was followed by 22、uh, victories、uh, with 10 losses. But now, this time, we won 28 districts、uh, with only four losses. And there are three elements behind this、uh, strong approval rating to the,、uh, the current administration and the stability、uh, of the support to. LDP and ruling parties. Well,、uh, the, the political opinion survey,、uh, the public opinion surveys were conducted、uh, during e l e c t i o n And、uh, in the case of the past elections,、uh, the approval rating of the cabinet or the administration back then was on the order of 40%, and the approval rating for LDP was、uh, around 30%. But now, this time, Uh, the approval rating of the current、uh, the government is、uh, the, the, the higher than 55%, and LDP、uh, enjoys a 40% approval rating. We worried whether we can maintain such high level of support, and、uh, in fact, we succeeded thanks to activities. Uh, by the candidates, and、uh, the, that resulted in a major victory of LDP. The second point that's about the priority districts.、Uh, we made a choice uh, and uh, the、uh, concentration. I mentioned about 32 districts with one seat. There are some districts where we suffered the major loss, especially in six prefectures in Chohoku region, Yamanashi, Nagano, Niigata. Uh, that is Koshinets region. So, Tohoku and Koshinets region,、uh, which is、uh, called a V letter belt, that used to be a kind of rust belt for us, but、uh, now, the, the six years ago,、uh, the, we only won、uh, one district and eight losses, and then three years ago, it was three to six, but now we made a major、uh, bouncing back. Uh, six uh, victories over three losses in Iwate. The Hirose, the Miss Hirose won. And、uh, in fact, this is the first time in 30 years that、uh, LDP candidate、uh, won in Iwate. 
And、uh, the, ever since、uh, Niigata became the、uh, single seat district、uh, in 2016, Mr. Kobayashi, the, the, the candidate this time, won、uh, for the first time. And he, Fukushima, Miyagi, Iwate are the prefectures that、uh, the, Mr. Abe visited. And on the last day, he was supposed to visit、uh, Yamanashi and Niigata. Oh, and the prime ministers visited those prefectures, and、uh, in all those prefectures, we won. So,、uh, six prefectures in Tohoku, Yamanashi, Nagano, Niigata, those are the prefectures that I frequently visited during the election for preparation. And ever since the election began, I went to the six Tohoku prefectures, all six, and I went twice to Niigata and three times to Yamanashi、uh, for canvassing. And in terms of my stumping to these、uh, nine prefectures,、uh, my victory rate in these、uh, nine prefectures was 82%, which is a very high win rate, I believe,、uh, for myself. And the third point, I think, the third reason was、uh, the mushrooming of different opposition parties and the fragmentation of the opposition camp. In the past two elections,、uh, the LDP in almost all of the single seat districts, we came head to head against a unified candidate which,、uh, fielded by the opposition. But of the 32 single seat districts,、uh, the Opposition parties were only able to unify candidates in 11, just in 11 districts. In Tochigi Prefecture, my home uh, prefecture, uh, the, 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 the The Constitutional Democratic Party, the Ishin, and the Communist Party, there are five opposition candidates in my prefecture alone. And I think it was similar for other electoral districts around the country. Now, then, what would have happened if the opposition parties had unified their candidate? We did an estimation, and this is only an estimation, but in the previous and previous election,、uh, the opposition camps、uh, unified candidates.、Uh, And the average number of votes they clinched、uh, versus the number of votes that、uh, our candidates won this time were compared. And in the 32 single seat districts, of, including the three Tohoku prefectures, in six prefectures in total, the LDP. Would have lost. And so, of the 32 single seat districts, we estimate that they would have won 22 districts and lost 10, which would be similar to the previous election. But this is just an estimation. And、uh, Probably, when you take into account the strength of the opposition parties and whether the Constitutional Democratic Party and the Ishin were able to unify candidates, perhaps the LDP would not have lost as much as 10, maybe four, somewhere between four to 10 losses. Probably that would have been the loss rate if the opposition camp had unified their candidates. But what was very unfortunate was the results in Okinawa. As far as Okinawa was concerned, I visited there twice, including the last day of the election campaign period for canvassing. And every time we have to fight an uphill battle in Okinawa, and last time we lost by 160,000, and in the previous time, We lost by、uh, 64,000 votes, a very large loss. And this time,、uh, our uh, candidate approached to、uh, close to、uh, 2,880 votes, different from the opposition camp. And this year, Okinawa、uh, started with the January Nago.、Uh, Mayor's district, and they have,、uh, we had won in six elections. And, and in、uh, September, there will be the gubernatorial race in Okinawa, which would be、uh, the most、uh, critical election. And、uh, in the upper house,、uh, uh, Genta Costa, who, who was a 38 year old, a very fresh、uh, candidate, was fielded by LDP, but he lost by a very, very narrow margin. 
to the opposition. And of course, we can always talk about what we could have done after we suffer a loss. And there are many things we could have done better. For example, in Miyako Island, uh, the Kuja Agenta's uh, grandfather apparently runs a soba uh, shop there, but the voting rate there was very low. So if we he had increased the vote rate by 10 percent in that district, he could have won. Also, the San Seito, which is a new party, was founded for this upper house election. And in Okinawa, they garnered 22,000 votes. So without that, those votes, if we had gained those votes, we could have won in Okinawa as well. But of course, uh, we, a loss is a loss. So we have to uh, I guess uh, succumb to the loss. And in uh, Friday of last week, I went to Okinawa uh, to uh, develop a strategy, a new strategy for the gubernatorial race in September. The new party called the Sanseito, I said, was formed, and the Lewa and NHK party. These uh, emerging new opposition parties, in total, these three parties together won 5.34 million votes, which is 10 percent of the total, and they won four uh, seats in the uh, proportional represented districts in this current upper election. Uh, so, of course, I have not looked at all of the detailed numbers, but uh, they tend to focus on a single issue in their campaigning, and they use the SNS very, very deftly and cleverly uh, during their campaign. And so they can take the edge. And uh, in that sense, I think uh, their focus on a single issue to take the edge in just a single issue was very effective. And now, uh, the voting rate this time was 52 percent, which is 3 percent more than the previous election. So in the uh, proportional representative constitution, uh, the total vote was increased by 3 million votes. And uh, the LDP also increased its uh, voting rate by 540,000, but our voting rate dropped by 1 percent. Uh, so we lost uh, one seat and uh, ended in just 18 seats in the proportional represented uh, districts. And so I guess that uh, we can renew or we should renew our strategy for the proportionally represented constituencies. But in any event, uh, we would like to take those factors into consideration in redeveloping a new strategy for the next election. Now, I'd like to move on to policy issues. Japan faces uh, various policy challenges, both within and without the country. And uh, I think that uh, because we were given this political stabili stability, it is the LDP's uh, and the current uh, ruling coalition's responsibility uh, to uh, implement on these challenges. Uh, the most imminent would be, of course, the price upsurge. And also, uh, since the end of February, when the Ukrainian war broke out, uh, prices have surged across uh, the world. For example, crude oil prices uh, represented by WTI last uh, year was about $70 a barrel, but now it went to 110 barrels a dollars a barrel. It's currently about 95 dollars a barrel, but still maintains a relatively high price level. In the case of Japan, if I may talk about gasoline prices, Japan was one of the first in the world to take measures uh, to mitigate uh, the fluctuation of the crude oil prices. One liter of regular gasoline we want to bring to about uh, 170 yen or so and peg it at that price, if possible, uh, through our policies. Of course, uh, the price of gasoline is going up, but still, compared to the European countries, it's still about 20 percent underpriced or 20 percent uh, cheaper than the European uh, countries. Also, the price of wheat, uh, because uh, the Ukraine was a granary, uh, the uh, 
wheat prices have shot up. But in the case of Japan, 85% of the consumed wheat in Japan are imported. So this import rate has to be reviewed. But um, the government's sales price of the wheat is now kept lower than the import price of the wheat that the Japanese government purchases from abroad. And uh, in Europe and the United States, they have seen 8% or 9% increases in wheat prices. Of course, there are other countries with higher inflation, but even in the main countries, it's 8 to 9% increase in wheat prices. But Japan was able to suppress the wheat price rise to four, a quarter of this. But of course, commodity price increases will hit the households very harshly. So we would like to take additional measures. And in the case of Japan, the commodity price upsurge 90% of the reason for the price up surge is gasoline and power, that is energy prices, plus food price surge. So these two price up surges are the areas we want to focus on to take speedy and very effective countermeasures. And for that, we want to use the reserve funds, about 5.5 trillion yen of reserve funds, uh, which we can uh, use in an agile or manner. We would certainly like to utilize those reserve funds. And as for measures to reduce the uh, power prices, uh, we want to establish a point system for people who use power uh, efficiently and conserve power. And in summer, uh, for those households which participate in such a point system, we want to provide 2,000 yens worth of points to start with. but. Uh, we don't want to force power conservation on them, or we don't want to give up points for a certain amount of power conservation. We want to make sure that these people can earn points by utilizing their air conditioning in an effective manner. And through such measures, we want to reduce the power and electricity burden on households. As for food prices, I believe fertilizer would probably become the most effective countermeasure. Uh, about 10 percent of the total price of food is actually fertilizer costs. And uh, compared to May, uh, fertilizer prices have risen by 1.5 fold. So this is something we have to do something about. Back in 2008, similar policies were adopted, namely, the, the majority of price increase of the fertilizer are compensated by the government. So by such policies, the food price, especially the production cost of the agriculture produce, uh, that could be uh, reduced by 10 percent. By so doing, at the stage of the final consumption, the food price increase could be suppressed to a minimum level, and that's the intent behind such policies. On the other hand, about the price surge, that is experienced in other countries as well. What is important is that the wage has to increase the in tandem. In Japan, the price inc uh, the age wage increase was 2.07 percent, the second highest in the past 20 years. And uh, the summer bonus was up by 50,000 yen since uh, last summer, up to the level uh, comparable to pre-COVID uh, the summer bonus season. But of course, if it is uh, just the end of the uh, wage increase, uh, then that doesn't make any sense. In other words, we have to create an environment where wage would continue to increase. To do that, we have to uh, upskill the uh, workers uh, that are commensurate with the wage increase. For instance, we hear that the, the IT personnel uh, would be insured by 500,000. 
and for other professions as well, we need to consider how we can upgrade the skills of the workers in coming three years, spending 400 billion yen to support the human resource development. But uh, 400 billion yen over three years, whether that is the right level or not, I would say that this may be a little bit too small. In fact, uh, the, the span should be increased from three to five years, and then the size of the funding has to be increased uh, to uh, like one trillion yen. The, in other words, private sector is unwilling to respond if uh, the number is uh, not big enough. Therefore, this is something that we'd like to continue to consider uh, after summer, and also investment into the future, that is investment for the future generation, the young people. That is going to be extremely important. When I was in charge uh, as a minister, I uh, introduced a policy uh, for free uh, the tuition fee uh, for uh, the children and uh, the, the the nursery home. And uh, the some time ago, the uh, former Prime Minister Tony Blair stated, I think of the English skill of the five-year-old. The, that skill would determine uh, the capacity, the of or an ability of the uh, Great Britain, Britain uh, 30 years later, and that applies to Japan. Or even more important than that, I think we have to consider how we can further focus on upgrading uh, the the children' ability. In fact, uh, the. The, there is a, a major challenge that is posed by the aging society and declining fertility uh, that uh, is uh, in front of us beyond a uh, COVID uh, pandemic. After World War II, uh, the then President de Gaulle introduced uh, drastic policies after analysis of uh, the, the reason why uh, the World War II broke out. And uh, the, he concluded that the declining population was the major reason why uh, the, the Germany started invasion. And uh, as a result, uh, he introduced the various uh, the policies uh, to uh, beef up the capacity, capability. And uh, the, likewise, we have to consider how we can improve uh, the capacity, capability of this country. In fact, there are many points that I'd like to touch on. Uh, therefore, ho I hope that I would have another opportunity to elaborate on the policies that I have just mentioned. Anyway, uh, the, we have to consider how we can upgrade uh, the Japanese economy to be handed over to the next generation. This is always the responsibility and uh, of uh, the politicians and Prime Minister Kishida. Uh, now advocates neo-capitalism, or the new form of capitalism. The, in a nutshell, it is about expansion of investment. If I'm to elaborate on that, uh, that would take uh, too long time. But by expanding investment, the very social challenges, including those brought about by climate change, uh, could be resolved, which would lead to the another step of growth. In the past, the, if it is a climate uh, change, then it was considered as a constraint against the growth, but rather by overcoming that challenge, that could lead to the step uh, to move forward. The, that kind of a changing the mindset is required in, new, uh, in view of uh, the challenges. Expanding investment, especially in the field of DX, digital transformation, climate-related technology, that is green, uh, the transformation of GX, and AI, bio, uh, those are the growth sectors where Japan can uh, be uh, can improve its competitive edge. And in fact, in coming 10 years, uh, or rather, in the past 10 years, I have to say that investment in Japan has shrunk to a great extent. The digital economy, DX, has been advocated for a long time. But uh, then the the names that would come up to our mind, uh, that could be GAFA, Apple, the IT giants in China. Now, compared to that, 
in Japan. When the COVID-19 pandemic uh, spread, I have to say that the, so far no uh, vaccines have been produced domestically. I'm sure that the pharmaceutical companies are faced with other challenges, but uh, think of that. They failed to produce uh, the made in Japan vaccines, and can we still say that the Japan is a technology oriented country, I have to say no. In order to overcome that, we have to increase investment, the including uh, the DX and uh, green or GX and the human resources. Have to consider how we can increase the investment by two, three percent, so that the uh, Japan uh, can upgrade its economy uh, to a next step, the worth of about 10 trillion yen. So that's what we need to uh, work on, uh, since that is uh, the most important uh, challenge for us. Now I'd like to briefly touch on security. Japan is faced with extremely harsh international environment. In view of that, the diplomacy and security, they have to be strengthened. In addition to that, there are three sides, that is economic security, energy security and food security. Those uh, three sides of securities have to be rebuilt, reconstructed. Conventionally, about the security and uh, international relationship or diplomacy, world was shake, uh, shaken uh, by the uh, invasion by Russia into Ukraine, and uh, five months have passed ever since and a serious situation still continues. There are some efforts, initiatives for intermediary, and uh, Foreign Minister Chebyshev of Turkey is a the person that I know of since uh, some time ago. He is quite uh, the, the dexterous, uh, skillful diplomat, and still, even when he tries, it's hard to mediate uh, the situation there. And for the time being, we cannot expect that the situation would turn to positive in a short uh, period of time. Therefore, we have to be prepared that the, the current, uh, the difficult situation would continue for some time. The President Putin, uh, when his position was accepted, he uh, dared to introduce uh, the tanks into the territory of other country to force the, uh, the change of the current situation didn't uh, mind uh, the killing uh, the civilians there. And in fact, this is the topic that has been discussed in the context of Asia as well. But the unilateral change of situation status quo by force uh, from the uh, citizen's point of view, this is something that we keenly feel uh, or sense every day uh, by looking at the situation there. The change of status quo by force, whether it is in Ukraine or in East Asia, it is not something that we can tolerate, no matter where that uh, is experienced. With that strong determination and resolution, the international community has to be united to face, confront against Russia. The situation in the Ukraine is not happening totally distant uh, from Japan. It's something that we have to grapple with, and I think people realize this. Uh, the security issues surrounding Japan, the issue of China, the issue of North Korea, I think uh, is uh, actually becoming increasingly severe in, a, in an accelerated manner. Uh, the deterrence and the response power of the Japan-US alliance must be strengthened. That's needless to say. But also, Japan's own defense capability must be strengthened in a wholesale way. And before the end of the year, we will come up with a new national security strategy and a new national defense program guideline, or NDPG. And regarding the defense uh, spending, last month, Prime Minister Kishida at the Japan-US summit uh, promised a significant increase in defense spending, a substantial increase in English. So in terms of nuance, 
I think it's a expression that went one step beyond his predecessors. predecessors. And uh, we are look, the current defense spending is about 5.5 uh, trillion. Uh, we want to increase that to at least 6 trillion or more. And within five years, we want to increase it to 2% versus GDP. Of course, uh, the uh, starting point is different from the NATO countries, so we have to uh, consider that. But we do have in mind the number of 2% against GDP, uh, and we want to be able to achieve a budget level which will enable us to engage in a wholesale strengthening of our defense capability. And in actually compiling the defense plan, uh, we will have to, of course, discuss how we can build up uh, the defense spending uh, one item by one item. But without uh, the uh, politics showing a strength leadership, if we leave everything to the conventional pathways, we will not be able to cope in a speedy and strong manner to the changing security environment around us, uh, surrounding us. Uh, so politically, we want to send out a clear message. We will continue to issue a clear message message so that we can achieve that level of defense spending increase. I think that's very important. Of course, uh, reinforcing our defense capability uh, is not something that we can do alone. We need the cooperation and collaboration with the G7 and the international community. And Prime Minister Kishida last month, uh, following on the G7 meeting, also went to the NATO summit meeting, which was held in Spain. And it was the first time that a Japanese prime minister uh, attended that NATO uh, summit meeting. The G7, all, uh, all of the G7 countries are non-Asian countries but Japan. Japan is the only Asian country represented at the G7. And so we have the responsibility to assimilate the voices of the ASEAN and uh, uh, Asian countries. We are the only country that can do that. And uh, the linking Europe and the Indo-Pacific, this uh, free and building a partnership for freedom and democracy. And also in 2016 in Kenya, when TICAD was held, uh, Prime Minister Abe launched the free and uh, open Indo-Pacific concept or FOIP uh, concept. And by achieving and realizing these two concepts, Japan would like to play a uh, leadership and central role. As for energy security, uh, due to the uh, Ukrainian invasion by Russia, the international uh, situation surrounding energy has been transformed, and the geopolitical risks have destabilized the energy market and has led to the surge in energy prices. Also, at the same time, the uh, tight uh, power or electricity uh, supply and demand, and also energy supply is becoming a strategic weapon. And uh, because of this, I think the situation surrounding energy is going to become even more severe and tough. And at the same time, Japan also has to achieve its pledge at the Paris Agreement. And by 2030, we have pledged a 26% cut in uh, CO2 emissions, which is, frankly speaking, a very, very tough goal, ambitious goal. And in 2050, we want to achieve carbon neutral. That's a very ambitious goal as well. And Japan has committed to these two ambitious goals. As you know, both these uh, targets are very difficult to achieve. There is no s simple or easy answer to reach those targets because, unfortunately, the uh, stable supply and uh, inexpensive and uh, safe and easy on the earth and environment, these are the four conditions that must be met by an ideal energy. But such an ideal energy source, unfortunately, does not exist here on this earth, on this planet, at least for the time being. So we have to use renewable energy. We also 
have to use uh, nuclear power, of course, uh, with considerations for safety and uh, thermal uh, power uh, generation uh, that's decarbonized, and in the future, hydrogen. Uh, so we must consider a mix, uh, a best mix. Uh, we must aim for a best mix of energies, uh, taking into consideration the various options available. Also, uh, the stable supply of uh, power and electricity. Electricity is a major issue for Japan today. Uh, this time, uh, Japan, uh, f at the end of uh, June, faced uh, unprecedented heat, which increased our electricity demand. And we had to issue an alert in June about uh, the tight electricity uh, supply. And uh, the thermal power plants, which have been uh, repaired, uh, will restart towards summer. Uh, so we have gained the prospects for a stable uh, electricity supply for the summer. But uh, due to the trend of decarbonization, uh, the uh, thermal is the so-called uh, peak uh, power, uh, which is readily available. Uh, and uh, nuclear and uh, coal, you have th these are the base uh, energies. And uh, the quickest energy that we can bring online would be thermal power. And uh, however, the thermal power plants have uh, and power generation using thermal power is uh, declined, has declined, and many are stopped. And uh, that has made our prospects for energy or electricity supply and demand uh, toward the uh, winter uh, very, very harsh. Uh, but we hope to restart many of these thermal uh, power uh, plants. And we will also maximize the use of non-fossil fuel-based uh, electricity generation. So we will take all measures we can. But I think the key I think would be nuclear power, especially when you think about the volume of electricity available through nuclear power. And on the 14th of this month, the prime minister told reporters that he will utilize as much nuclear power as possible, and a maximum of nine power plants will be restarted by winter, he said. And of course, nuclear power plants whose safety have been confirmed will be restarted and used for the stable electricity supply and also to uh, lead to uh, the rebuilding of energy uh, security. Now, how to position nuclear power in the future? I think there are many, many views. And what can we do to enhance the safety of nuclear power? Uh, it requires a lot of uh, attention and a lot of uh, future work. But another issue we have to consider is uh, young people, 18-year-olds, if they lose interest in energy security and energy issues, that spells doom for country. In the past, I think that uh, nuclear engineering used to be uh, an ideal discipline, uh, and many young and capable youth students used to go into that field. And uh, a young person, 18 or in their teens, can choose what fields they want to study in the future. But if they lose interest in nuclear uh, power, uh, then who will take care of the decommissioning of old power, nuclear power plants in Japan in 20, 30, or 40 years? Uh, can we leave that to our neighbors, neighboring countries, uh, who, when there's an issue over the Senkaku Islands, uh, they may stop uh, providing talent to Japan to help with decommissioning in uh, several tens of years of time? So we have to plot our policy designs, think, taking into consideration what may happen 50 years down the line. Okay. So we have to consider how we can reduce dependence on energy from those sources, the, the, especially from Russia, uh, the coal and uh, oil uh, from Russia. Eventually, uh, the import from Russia would be phased out. Uh, that's another commitment that Japan made together with the G7 countries. And also at the G7 summit for Russian oil, the, the ceiling was set so that 
uh, the in a comprehensive manner the transaction uh, of which price would uh, go beyond that the price cap would be uh, banned. So, so that's a price cap uh, system. In view of the stability of the energy pricing in the market, and in fact, a WTI movement since the announcement about the price cap, we believe that announcement uh, worked to the positive uh, for uh, the stability of WTI. At the same time, it is uh, designed to stop uh, the uh, revenue flowing into Russia. Now, at the same time, we have to consider measures taken to alleviate the burden for developing countries. Those are the measures that we have to steadily work on and introduce. For LNG, according to President Putin, the Sakharin II that Japan has an interest uh, would uh, become Russian incorporation. The incorporated, according to the uh, the president decree that was signed by him, Sakharin II, uh, that is instrumental for LNG supply to Japan. And however, the presidential decree this time would not immediately ban uh, the import of LNG from Russia into Japan, but we have to continue to work so that we can protect and secure the interests of the Japanese companies and at the same time ensure the secure, uh, ensure the stability of the supply of LNG. Whether it is LNG, the dependence on Qatar or Russia, that's uh, the the environment where we are in, and we have to consider how we can change that by diversifying the sources. For instance, methane hydrate that is uh, found in the, the, the waters near Japan, and therefore we have to consider how we can explore those new energy sources and secure the supply. We believe such diversified approaches would be required. Last but not the least about the food security in June, decision was made on the basic policy, which included uh, food security, energy security, and e economic security. When the international environment is increasingly harsh, how we can improve uh, the self-supply ratio of food in Japan and how we can uh, promote uh, intensified operation and make up for uh, the uh, shortage of labor. I was born in the uh, rural area, so that uh, the I would say that I'm the one that is uh, from the most remote uh, area compared to the other people. In fact, I would say that uh, I was born in the area near the upstream or the of the river, and that means uh, in the middle of the mountain. So despite such disadvantage, we have to consider how we can improve the agricultural operation and strengthen uh, the production there uh, to uh, get rid of uh, the excessive dependence on food import and the the current crisis also shed the light on the shortage of fertilizer. Fertilizer as well is supplied uh, from overseas. How to secure the stability, the sustainability of primary industry. And those are the areas that require a drastic measures with the budget sufficiently appropriated to improve food security. However, such a budget is not just for the uh, complementing the loss of in the short run for the farmers. In fact, if it is used in such a way, it is meaningless. Rather, we have to consider what could be supplied within Japan, what could be supplied from overseas in a secure and stable manner uh, through diversified sources and the, how we can uh, secure the labor force, including the youth, the agriculture has to be the industry that is attractive enough for the youth. These 
the industry that the youth would find it as a viable profession. So the budget has to be used to make such an agriculture, despite increasingly difficult and unstable and certain international environment. Uh, the time is over when we used to uh, get uh, the anything uh, from overseas at lower price. Well, the complacent uh, in Japanese, uh, that could be translated as suspension of the oil. So the oil, that is the fundamental element of the industry. And without uh, that element, uh, the industry, the business operation, and the people's livelihood are no longer sustainable. We have to prevent that uh, from happening in implementing various policies. Well, at the last uh, election campaign, I traveled around uh, more than 30 prefectures all over Japan. And uh, with the time constraint, I gave the speeches. Uh, the, there's something that was comparable to what I have stated today. And uh, I felt a very good response, a reaction from the audience that reflected the expectation toward Kishida administration and at the same time responsibility that is uh, the handed over to us. So as we are faced with the predicament, both within and outside, we have to, we, I am here to uh, renew my resolution and to continue to dedicate my efforts to work on those challenges. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak uh, about those uh, challenges and the solutions in front of you today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Motegi. Now, we'd like to take questions. If you have any questions, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone. Please state your name and affiliation. Shimada -sama. Shimada, Mr. Shimada is raising a hand. Please bring a microphone to him. Shimada is speaking about food security. That is uh, the issue of primary importance. Uh, thanks to globalization, we received supply from all over the world but at a lower price, but that age is over. As you have just stated, how can we change the situation? How can we make the agriculture uh, the, the something worth for, for uh, the young people when there are many difficulties, including the, uh, the difficulty in consolidating units of uh, the farming and so on. What do you think would be the priority? In fact, uh, thank you for the advice and suggestion uh, that I receive uh, routinely about the food security, Mr. Shimada. First, we have to consider how we can secure the food in the most certain way. And there has to be the area that is most uh, convenient or accessible. For instance, soba, the buckwheat uh, that is produced only in autumn in Japan, but in Australia that is produced in spring. So there won't be any competition between Australia versus Japan. So that's an example of the area that is uh, most conducive or accessible immediately. At the same time, there are areas uh, that are safeguarded uh, the, in view of the protecting of the sector, but uh, that's the area that has to be reformed, which would lead to food security. I mentioned about uh, securing the budget for food security. To do that, it has to come with a substance Therefore, not only ministry, ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fishery, but throughout the government and LDP included, would like to immediately come up with the uh, the strategies uh, to work on this challenge. Thank you very much. Any other questions, Takemori-san? A 
my name is Takemuri from Yomiuri's uh, head office. Thank you for your patronage over the years. Uh, I'd like to ask about energy security. You mentioned Russia, but uh, President Biden visited Saudi Arabia just recently. And uh, currently, uh, because of the cool relations between the US and Saudi Arabia, there was some concern. And uh, of course, in Europe, they have the Syrian issue. Uh, therefore, I think there are many ways in, uh, in many uh, cases where these countries cannot work with uh, the Middle East. But Japan has a long-standing relationship with the Middle East. And uh, so can we not uh, foster increased production by uh, Saudi Arabia? And you mentioned uh, Turkey earlier. So is there no way for Japan to urge uh, the Middle East countries to increase their crude oil production? Takemori san I think uh, a person uh, who asks, <laughs> well, you are a person who has a lot of knowledge, and a person like that asking me, a person who doesn't know much about energy, such a question is actually a test. But actually, uh, I think that Saudi is one of the, and Turkey and Iran are the difficult issues and difficult areas in the Middle East. And of course, uh, Politically speaking, they have different histories, and also the UK, the US, various countries have been engaged in the Middle East. And uh, however, that engagement, uh, putting aside whether that engagement has led to the stability uh, for the people in the Middle East, putting that aside, they have engaged in these areas. And so uh, the Middle East countries require the power uh, and engagement of the US and Europe. But but due to the difficult history, I think that they have some mixed feelings about the involvement of the US and Europe. And so Japan is one of the few countries uh, that have no negative engagement uh, with the Middle East, and that's our strength. But I think. Uh, I think uh, that uh, these relations require a lot of different trade-offs and also a balance of power. Uh, therefore, uh, these are not issues that can be resolved by one country alone. But I think that Japan can in a, uh, make a positive engagement, or we can uh, become a pump primer, in a sense, to facilitate uh, a better engagement. Uh, for example, in the foreign ministry, I think that uh, Japanese Arabists are very, very, uh, Arabists or Arab experts are very, very capable. Even compared to other countries, they have expertise, they have historical knowledge. Uh, so we can leverage uh, their expertise. And rather than Japan single-handedly resolving the issues, perhaps we can uh, create a framework or become a pump primer uh, and become the central pump primer to facilitating engagement by other countries. I think that's the role that Japan can play. Thank you. That was a 200-point answer, not just 100 points, 200 points in grade. Thank you. This is going to be the last question that we can take. Thank you very much, Mr. Mochegi. Hayashi is my name. Two questions. First, about the human resource development of the semiconductors, how Japan is going about uh, working on that. The, the 20 uh, locations uh, for semiconductor production spending 16 uh, trillion uh, in the case of Taiwan, what about Japan and South Korea is also uh, focusing on this sector. What Japan can do and what is expectation toward the youth of Japan? I mentioned about three securities that have to be redeveloped. And one of them is about economic security, which includes semiconductor, as one of the important elementary factors or components. I'm not advocating everything that has to be made in Japan, but uh, the, it is advisable for Japan to create the stronghold of semiconductor that is competitive vis-a-vis uh, -vis international community, especially the when Japan 
thinks about uh, the division of uh, the labor with other partner countries, there has to be the areas that can be identified uh, to be further developed, which uh, should be promoted by the businesses and also be allocated with the budget. And for such priority areas, the human resources would be eventually attracted. When there is such a strong message communicated that that being the important sector, then I'm sure that the important uh, the human resources would be attracted naturally. And uh, Mr. Hayashi, uh, you are running the uh, cram school, so I'm sure you know more than I know about uh, the what I expect uh, from the youth. I would uh, tell the young people that don't be afraid of making failures, mistakes. The 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 beauty of the youth is that uh, they, they can uh, try again even when they fail. According to Einstein, the, the, he said that the opposition uh, of uh, the success is not the failure, but rather not trying or not doing anything. And I agree. Thank you very much. It is about time to conclude the lecture meeting. We well, would like to express appreciation to a Mr. Motegi by a big round of applause.